Now we have come to the current state of the art technique. It's called arithmetic coding. Actually, this method is also called pure theories. This is pure theories arithmetic coding. So, uh, this is an encoding function and uh, I will show you encoding and decoding. And uh, here's, once again, as always, the outline of the algorithm. It might seem very abstract, and, uh, but it's no matter. I will show the example that will explain everything. So, uh, we are given with symbols and their probabilities. We take the probabilities uh, into the interval. Our interval starts from 0 to 1. 1 is the, max, is the whole cumulative probability. So we will subdivide the whole interval with length proportional to probabilities of the symbols. And uh, on each step we will redetermine our interval. And it's determined by this formula. This is the alpha, so the lower bound, and this is beta. This is the upper bound of the interval we are working with. So we set alpha and beta to the interval corresponding to the next symbol and continue with step 2. This is how we are going to visualize that, but it's not the real example I'm going to give you. So to visualize it, let's say our code stream is A, A, B, right? So we have an interval subdivided into uh, smaller intervals for a, b and c. a comes, thus we expand the interval for a and re-subdivide this interval corresponding to a once again where one-third will be for a, one-third will be for b and one-third will be for c. Yeah, second day comes. We're kind of... We are actually here and this is the expansion of this small thing, this. We encode A once again. And at the end, here's B. We are somewhere in this interval, which was two times to this side and one to bottom side, right? And one time somewhere here corresponding to me. So we are somewhere here. And this is the expansion. It's like zooming into this place. But this visual scheme is useful for understanding. But we will use table to really encode something. Now here's our table. We are going to use to encode our symbols. Thus these are our symbols and their probabilities. Very important is the order of the symbols to form the interval. Our order is the following. Uh, to make it simpler, I'll give a small, small sketch. Up to here is interval for A, for D, and very small for B and C. Here's our order. A, D, B, C. 0 0.4 here. 0 0.7 because 0 0.4 plus 0 0.3 is 0 0.7 here's 0 0.9 and very very small for c because c is 0 0.1 yeah so we start from the interval which uh, whose lower bound is 0 and uh, the length of the interval is 1 so we are going to encode d a b d right uh, that's why we're going to use our formula 0 plus 0 0.4 multiplied by 1 equals 0 0.4 If you didn't understand why it is actually 0 0.4 it comes from the formula I've given in the outline of the algorithm but I know this is a tricky part, so uh, 0 0.4 actually comes from this place. We sum all symbols up to D, 
when we determine alpha. And when we determine beta, so the upper bound of the smaller interval, we sum symbols up to the next symbol. Thus, for d, this is 0 0.4. But if we would look for new alpha for b, for example, we would have used 0 0.7 because probabilities up to b are 0 0.7 so the probability up to d is 0 0.4 thus we use 0 0.4 and I think you can say what's the length of such an interval of course it's 0 0.3 it corresponds to the length for d length for d is its probability so we write it down 0 0.3 alright next symbol is a What's the new alpha for A? It's 0 0.4 from previous interval plus L length of the interval for A is 0 0.4 multiplied by something. This something will actually be 0 because no symbols occur before A. Thus, alpha is still 0 0.4. And length of this alpha is the previous length multiplied by new length length for a is 0 0.4 because its probability is 0 0.4 so 0 0.3 multiplied by 0 0.4 equals 0 0.12 okay now one more symbol b we take previous alpha plus uh, 0 0.7, this is the sum of probabilities for B, multiplied by 0 0.12 by L from here. And this actually equals to 0 0.484. We have taken previous alpha, multiplied the, uh, summed this by multiplication of the all probabilities of the symbols coming up to the current symbol to B and multiply it with L from the previous step. Okay, so to update L we use 0 0.12 multiplied by 0 0.2 which equals to 0, 0, 0,024. Okay, and the final symbol D we have to once again redefine alpha, uh, redefine L. We use previous alpha 0 0.44 plus 0 0.4. Yeah, and the uh, numbers are starting to look scary. But to our luck, we're done with that. Okay. Uh, 0. 0, 0, 0072 So uh, what's the what's the what's the next step? Actually we're inside this interval with this length and uh, our symbols T A B D given the interval we yeah we are we have worked with uh, our sequence is hidden somewhere in this small interval and we have to encode it later acquiring this interval to encode actually it but in a very tricky manner we can encode our symbols dabd actually is a sequence with any number inside this interval but uh, it will be not really formal way. Thus we are going to look for dyadic fraction. So uh, we will choose some number which is dyadic fraction inside this interval. Uh, dyadic fraction is such a number where we have some number in numerator, some number dyadic fraction, some number and here the number has to be 
some power of 2 absolutely any this dyadic fraction guy deserves special explanation so at the end as I said we produce interval after the table step then in this interval in this small number we use dyadic fraction to calculate the dyadic fraction we find smallest the t is this new variable we use we find smallest t uh, which should uh, this inequality should hold our l here is our interval length to find uh, we have to find the integer satisfying also this inequality if there are two solutions we take the even one then we reduce the fraction and then we store y in binary the final answer is r okay from the step with the table we acquired alpha equals this number beta this number and the length of the interval is this very very small number we are computing t according to the formula yeah and t equals 8 Next, we solve the inequality. So we know t, we know alpha, we know beta. Thus, we know y from here. We just multiply both sides by 2 to the power of 8. Thus, we have two answers 127 and 128. We choose the even one according to the condition. And uh, now we have to just reduce the dyadic fraction, so r equals y divided by 2 to the power of t uh, it is 128 divided by this this is 1 half so 1 half in binaries the final answer will be the the part after zero so we encode our d a b d with the given encoding function as one this is the final answer we reduce the dyadic fraction and encode it one half in binary uh, that produced 0 0.1 we ignored 0 point part and used the only part after dot as a final answer. The final answer is 1. Now we are going to try to decode what we produced. We will use this order and uh, actually same probabilities. We are going to use this table with alpha L this and decode it. I quickly remind you how to determine that. Okay, this is the first step. We know r. r is 1 half. We start from the interval 0 and the length 1. We will... the decoded symbol will be decoded according to what we produce here. We have produced 0 0.5 here. Where... what... to which symbol does this correspond? It corresponds to d because of... A, D, B, C. You remember I've written there. Yeah. Okay, that corresponds to D. Now the next step. R does not change throughout the whole algorithm. Alpha and L change. So, uh, we calculate new alpha according to the formula. We calculate new uh, alpha, uh, I'm sorry, L. Uh, 0 0.3 because we multiplied 1 by the length of d by the probability of d, this is 0 0.3 and then we recalculate this uh, 0 0.3 in period uh, it's inside the interval of a, thus we decode a now hopefully you already see that arithmetic coding is just no more than just plugging into the formulas we recalculate alpha, recalculate L, consequently 
uh, and so forth. Now we have decoded B. B is inside the interval. We have just decoded it. And this is the final step. We take the previous alpha, take the result of calculating this then we recalculate L plug everything in and determine the place on the interval we're currently at so we're at D but there is an important detail we have to know number of symbols beforehand otherwise the coding might never stop and that's it now you are able to use the arithmetic encoding scheme to encode and to decode. We will expand these concepts to real state-of-the-art technique.